Hello and welcome again. This is a continuation of uh, the series of videos that uh, talks about uh, one-way functions. Now, uh, this video um, is going to contain a lot of information about functions. Uh, we're not going to mention in this video uh, anything about one-way functions yet. And the reason for that is because we need, we need to cover some concepts that are important before we actually define or explain what a one-way function is. Now, all of what I'm going to explain here is actually topics from discrete mathematics. So if you already took a class in discrete mathematics or, or any kind of uh, abstract mathematics, kind of abstract, um, you will be you will remember all of this probably, you will probably recall all of this. So, so it will be review actually for you. All right, so let's start with the video. So uh, functions, which we defined in the previous video are also called transformations or mapping. So anytime you uh, hear me say transformation or mapping is just basically just a function. So there are some kinds of functions we need to do um, that have some kind of properties. So we say that a function uh, from A to B, remember that these are the inputs, so these are the outputs, and F transforms uh, these elements into the elements of B. So this is already a function. So we say that that function is one-to-one. Or -one. Well, you can write it down like this or like that. If the following is true, and this is the actual, the thing that I have here is the actual formal definition of one-to-one. -one. What this definition says is this. Every time you take two elements in A, and the images by f are equal, say so f of x1 is equal to f of x2, that means or implies that the inputs must be the same. Another way to look at this is look at the counterpositive, meaning that if x1 is not equal to x2, so the inputs are not equal, then the outputs can be equal, which is exactly what I have over here. Um, if you were to prove that something is one-to-one, -one, you will be using this kind of uh, definition. That would the thing that we'll be using. But uh, we want to understand what one-to-one -one functions are, let's say, in terms of the picture. So in terms of the picture, what I have here, I have my collection of inputs, A, my transformation F here, or whatever the rule is there, to B. This kind of picture that you see here, X1 and X2, going exactly to the same output, that cannot happen in a one-to-one -one function. So it doesn't happen in a one-to-one -one function. So every time you see something like this, the situation, two inputs which are different, going to the same output, that means that it's not a one-to-one -one function. It is a one-to-one -one function if this never happens for any inputs that are different, that are you choose A and B here, which is exactly what this definition says is here. If the inputs are different, the image must be uh, different. So that's the definition of a one-to-one. -one. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say we want to look at this function, which is a function from calculus, but uh, let's just look at uh, this. It's going to be make it easy for the example. So let's say my function x squared. Notice here that I didn't say what the uh, domain is, what a and b are. So in here it's kind of understood that the domain will be all the real numbers and the codomain of where all the images live will be all the real numbers too. Remember that this is the symbol for real number. Now, what I'm saying here is that this function is not one-to-one. -one. And why is that? Because I have two different inputs, one and negative one, for which I apply the rule. The rule here is to square it. So one goes to one squared, which is one, and negative one goes to negative one squared, which is also one. So two different inputs go to the same output. It means not, it's not one-to-one. -one. That's because of the definition. This function that I have here, which is also kind of like a function from a calculus, uh, the function is f of x equal to 2x plus 3. The input and outputs are the real numbers similar to the function that is here. This actually is a one-to-one -one function. Now, there is a way to check that it is actually one-to-one. -one. Now, if you think about this uh, picture here, you will realize that every time you put a number here, in a number here, this is not going to happen. So this is not going to be the case. So this function is, uh, is a one-to-one -one, uh, function. Now, there's also another uh, important concept about uh, function that is the onto or subjective. So we start again with a function that transform elements from A into elements of B by some uh, rule or assignment. And we're going to say that that function is onto if the following is happens. This thing that I have here 
is the actual definition of what a surjective is. What the definition says is this. Every time you take an element in the outputs, so every time you take a y and b, you can always find an input x here in such a way that that input goes to that output through the function f. So let me uh, show you a picture here. And that has to happen for all the elements of B. So every time, let's have, have this picture here. Every time I, and I take an element Y in here, I can always find something in the domain or in the input where it comes from. This is always possible. So every time, let me say that again. Every time I take an element here, I can always find in any, any element of B is coming from some element of A. So that's the definition of onto. Or another word to say it is that the image of that function is the whole B. So there are no elements that are missing here. When you map all the elements of A, when you map them with F, this all elements will cover all this set right here. So this also means that F is onto. Okay, let's look at some examples here. So let's say I have a function which is uh we're going to have a and b are the real numbers. So the function is defined by x cubed. This function is going to be an onto. And why is that the case? Well, let's think about uh, it all will depend in, in if the function is a function of calculus or any other uh, place. It will depend on why is, what kind of um, assignment I'm making here, what kind of mathematical formula I'm putting here. I'm putting an x cubed. Now, if I choose an element here in b, what that means is I have to find an element here. So that means I have to find a real number whose cube is exactly y. Okay, so the question is, can I always do that? Because that's what onto means. I can always do it for any real number. So let's choose a number y here in general. Can I go back here and produce a real number whose cube will be exactly why. In that case, I will answer yes. And the reason for that is because the number I can produce over here, it will be actually the cubic root of y. That cubic root of y that is here, if you cube it, will give you exactly y. And this is going to be a real number. And the reason it's a real number is because a cubic root of any number always exists, even if this number is negative. So I can always do this. Because I can always do it, this function is an onto function. All right. I hope that was that was clear. Okay. Let's look at an example that is not onto. So I have the same uh, domain and codomain. So I'm going from the real numbers into the real numbers. But now my function is defined by this rule. The rule is the function takes an input and squares it. Okay. This function is not onto. Now you might be. Uh, may be tempted to use the same thing. So I just take y and take the square root. But there is a little problem with that. The problem with that is that if you try to use the same argument and you look at this negative one here, you have to find a number here whose square is negative one. Now you can't find a real number that does that. You can find a complex number who does this, which is i, but i is not here. It's important also that the number that you find has to be here in the inputs, which are all the real numbers. So in this case, I can't find, I cannot produce any real number whose square is negative one. If you say, okay, I just take the square root of negative one. Uh, yes, that is the number I, but that's not in the real numbers. And remember, one of the conditions is it has to be here. So that doesn't work. It be, because it doesn't work for negative one, if at least doesn't work for one of the numbers, then it's not, it's not onto. So that's a function that is not, not onto. So not all the functions have to be onto, of course, not, not all the functions are one to one. It just depends. Anything uh, could happen. So the real reason we are talking about onto and one to one is because we want to define what a bijection is, because this bijection is important in cryptography we need to have functions that are bijective, and we will explain that later. But for now, let's look at what a bijective function is. So I have a function, and we're going to say that that function is a bijection if it is both one-to-one -one and onto. So it has the two properties 
we just talked about earlier. Both of them at the same time. Okay, so what? Uh, let's look at some examples. Let's look at this function x cube that we talked about early. Uh, we look at it and we saw that, of course, it's on to. You can also check that it's one to one. That's not very difficult. Draw a picture and uh, convince yourself that it is one to one. Convincing yourself, of course, and proving it are two different things. But you can convince yourself with kind of like a picture or a graph of this function x cubed. Let me give you a function that we might be using maybe later. So more uh, related to what cryptography is. So let's say, for example, I have this uh, function. My inputs are going to be all the numbers from 1 to 10. And my outputs will be the same. And my function is going to be defined in mathematical way like this. I'm going to take f of x. Whenever you give me an input, I'm going to say 2 to that input. And I take the remainder modulo 11. Now, in this case, this is not uh, uh, something that I can actually graph like in calculus, but let's, let's just uh, kind of try to do a little graph here. So what I already did here is I put my inputs here on the left hand side, all the numbers from 1 to 10, and my outputs here. The arrows indicate where the number goes. So for example, f of 1, so if I say 2 to the 1 module 11, of course, that's going to give me 2, so that's the output of 1. Uh, 2 squared, that's 4. Modulo 11, of course, that's giving me 4. And I do the same for 3. 3. Uh, 2 cubed is 8, so that gives me 8. That is here, so 3 goes to 8. And as you can see here, uh, if you're not convinced, you can double check that I, all the arrows are correct. So just a way to do it. Now, this picture, of course, it cannot be done if, if my, for example, my a is, for example, 100, so I cannot draw it, right? So it's not possible. But for this small example, we can we can draw a picture here. So, so for this small example, what we have here is, uh, and the reason I did this small example with the arrows is because from the picture, I can actually realize that is one to one and on to. One to one, remember that, that two inputs don't go to the same output. And if you look at it carefully here, that's exactly what's happening. There are not two inputs or two outputs that receive two arrows. That's basically a one to one. And go back to the one to one part of this video if you don't uh, remember that definition. So, but this is one to one. Why is it onto? Is it onto because every element in this set comes from some element in the inputs? You see, one comes from 10, uh, for example, five comes through from four. And let's say nine comes from from six. So every element here is uh, it has an uh, where, an image where it comes from. Okay, so that's a good way to see it. So use one to one and on to. I can also uh, put it in this table form if it makes it maybe a little bit easier to read. So in this table form, what I have here, this is my inputs or my set A, and these are my outputs, and this arrow F here. It means the transformation. So 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 8, 4 goes to 5, and, and so on. Now, so, that's, so this function is a bijection. We actually didn't do a proof of it. We didn't prove that it's a bijection. There is a way to prove that this is actually a bijection doing mathematics. But uh, we'll just uh, uh, be happy with the picture for now. So this function is a bijection. So it's it, or subjective. This is by and subjective too, which would make it, of course, a bijection at the same time. So let me put the, the right word, bijection. All right. So why do we talk about bijection or bijective functions? And the reason we talk about bijective function is uh, because bijective functions are a very special kind of functions we, that can be undone. And I will explain that in a second. So what is uh, this business of being and done. So this business of being done is this, is this fact from mathematics. And the fact is this, if you have a function from A to B, transforming elements from A into elements of B, that is already a bijection, and this is a fact of mathematics that needs to be proved, but we won't do that, then there is another function that 
goes from B to A, so goes backwards, such that every time a f the function f takes an x and transforms it to y, the function this g does the op opposite, takes the uh, y and transforms it to x. Let me show you the picture here. So the picture here is I have my function a that transform these elements in here into elements of b. So my function f is going to take an x and it's going to transform it into y. The function g, what it does, it does the opposite. It transforms the element y into the element x. Now for this function g to exist, this function f has to be a bijection, otherwise this function is not unique because if this is not a bijection then this g basically what happens is we don't know how to assign a value for y. That's basically the idea. So just keep in mind this which can remind you what g is. So what g is is g undoes whatever f does. Okay, so if f does multiplication by 2 for example, g will undo that multiplication by 2. So undoing multiplication by 2 is basically division by 2. So uh, f and g are doing opposite things. f does something and g undoes it. And this function always exists as long as this function here uh, is a bijection. That function that exists and it is unique, so there is only one, is called the inverse of the function of the function f. So it's the inverse of the function f whatever the function is, as long as f is, is a bijection. Okay, so, so let's see here. So the example we look at uh, at the beginning. So we have the function that goes from the reals into the reals that was defined by this mathematical expression, f of x is x cubed. We saw that this is a bijection. What is the inverse of this? The inverse is what a function that undoes whatever this does. What is this function doing? It's taking an input and cubes it. What will be undoing this uh, uh, this operation? Undoing cube is taking the cubic root. So the function g of x, the inverse of this function f, will be the cubic root of x. So this function does something and the function g undoes it. And the function g goes also from the reals from here to there. So that's basically the idea of, of the inverse function. So I'm going to stop the video now and the next video I'm going to show you another example of an inverse function and how this is related to cryptography and why is this is also related to one-way functions. So I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.